What's up guys, Chris Schwartz Edmiston here from SchwartzEdmiston.com. In today's tutorial, we are going to be looking at how to float an index page section over two other sections in the index to give us this cool overlaid banner look. So to get started, I have a pretty simple setup here. I have an index page, I have this hero section, which is my big banner image, and then I have a body section, which is my body content. So to, in order to float a section in between, all I have to do is add a section, and I'm going to call it float section. Pretty creative. And inside here, I'm going to just put trusted since 1982. Since we are a construction company in this example, I want to build trust and this will be a cool contact call to action here. So I'm going to save that. And I have a yellow background image that I've already pre-saved. You can see the background image is really small because uh, when you add really big images to Squarespace, it can really impact the page loading time. So when I'm just going to use a solid color as a background image, I just make it like really small, like 8 pixels by 8 pixels. Because it's a solid color, uh, it can't get pixelated since all the pixels are the same color. So that's just a little tip if you're going to use a background image uh, as just a solid color, make it really, really small so it doesn't impact page load time. Okay, so th the next thing that I have to do is just put the float section in between the hero and the body section because we want it to sort of overlay both. Alright, so now we're ready for the custom CSS. So I'm going to go to my custom CSS panel and make some room here. So the first thing I want to do is target this float section index page. So if I jump into the Chrome inspect, then we're going to be able to see the ID that we can target it with. And you can see the section ID is float section. So I'm just going to copy that and we target IDs with a hashtag. I'm going to open up some curly brackets. So the first thing that I want to do is uh, restrict this section's width to 80%. When you're overlaying content, I think it looks a little bit better if it's not all the way across, if it's like inset a little bit. So I'm going to give the width of 80%. The next thing I want to do is set its position to absolute. And this is going to pull it off of the page, out of the actual layering of each div, out of the stacking of the div. It's going to actually pull it off the page and allow us to position it anywhere that we want. So right now we can't see the background. Um, and it's white text on this white background. So the content is there, but we lost the background. So the way that we get it back is by setting in a Z index. And you, the default is one. So anything over like one or two will be fine. I'm gonna set it to 30 just to be safe. But now you can see that we have our background back. So right now um, it's, there's a lot of padding on the, on the index page. So before we actually get to centering this and overlaying it over the section, I want to first target uh, the padding. So the class in the Brian template that controls the padding on index pages is the index page content class. So I'll, I'll jump into the inspect element to show you guys that before I start writing the code. So here you can see the, the index page content class um, and the green is the padding. So on index pages that have images, you can see that they're getting 100 pixels of padding on the top and the bottom and uh, 80 pixels on the left and the right. So that's way too much padding for what I want. I want a much like slimmer and narrower overlay. So I'm going to override that and set the padding to 3M and then 2M. So we've reduced the padding significantly and I think it's gonna look a lot better for our overlay. 
Okay, so now to actually overlay it over the banner image, the way we do that is with um, the transform property. So before we transform it, I'm gonna give it a left of 50%. And so this is going to align the left-hand side of the container exactly 50% across the width of the screen. And because we're using percentages, that's going to apply no matter what the screen size is, it's always gonna be exactly in the middle. So that's not what we want. Obviously we want the middle in the center, but it's one step in the right direction. So to actually shift it over and then shift it up, we're gonna use the transform translate property. So I'm gonna write transform translate and then in uh, quote, um, parentheses, there we go, could not think of the word. In parentheses, I'm going to translate it uh, to upwards by negative 50% and to the left. And in order to get it to the left, I'm doing I'm transforming it by negative 50%. Okay. All right. So now you can see it did exactly what we wanted wanted it to do. We're moving it over by 50% of the width and then we're translating it back 50% of this element's width, which effectively centers it. And then we're also moving it upwards by 50% by using a negative value so that it always uh, is 50% in the section above it and 50% in the section below it. Um, so this is a really cool look. That's basically the code that we need to do that. Um, the transform property needs vendor prefixes in order to work across uh, all browsers. So instead of writing them out, I'm just going to copy them in there they'll be in the code in the description below. So the last thing that we have to do is you can see that right now it's overlaying the content below it. So in order to prevent that, um, before the closing bracket, so we're still within this float section code, I'm, what I have to do, this was my thinking behind writing this code. So basically whatever the section is following the section that we're floating, I want to add a certain amount of padding to the top of it to push the content down so it's not so crowded. So the way that we do that is because I'm within the float section, I could rewrite out hashtag float section, but because Squarespace, the CSS editor uses less by default, we can do a shortcut and just write ampersand. So again, this ampersand is just representing whatever class or classes are up here. So this is saying float section, and I'm gonna use the adjacent sibling selector. So this selector selects any sibling directly following whatever class we put before it. And then we put uh, the selector that we want the code to actually apply to. So I'm going to put section. So now whatever code we write in here is only going to apply to the section immediately following our floated section. And this is perfect because now we can add padding top, let's say 80 pixels, and it will only apply to this section immediately following this floated section. So this is great because I can go back to my pages panel and add a new section to show you guys that it's not gonna apply to any sections other than that one immediately following it. So this is really, really good if you're, you know, for your own site, but especially if you're designing for clients and you want this look, um, they don't have to go in and add padding, you know, manually uh, or remove padding for new sections added. It automatically takes care of itself with the code that I wrote. So I'll just call this whatever put a little content in here and save it. And you'll be able to see when I jump in the code, with my inspect element, that there's no padding being added to this section. But because this one is immediately following our float section, it gets a padding top of 80. 
no padding, padding top of 80. So that's a really cool solution uh, to this problem that you know I worked on, uh, really proud of that. So it, it's really nice that this is completely reusable. The other cool thing about this is that uh, this works with any sections. Um, so if I just add a random image in here, um, it works with sections that have two images, you know, it, it doesn't have to just be an image and then, you know, a blank background. You can literally overlay a section over any other sections in Squarespace. So that looks really crappy on my site, but there are some instances where you might want to have that effect, that look. So um, that's, that's really cool. The other great thing about this is that it's completely responsive and looks pretty good across screen sizes. Um, on mobile, you might want to add a media query to add more padding to this section, but um, that's just a preference thing. I'm not gonna do that for the sake of this tutorial. All right, so that is how you add a banner image over to other sections in Squarespace. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I had originally released another version of this tutorial and um, somebody found that it wasn't working on their site so I completely redid it and this is the way that you guys should be doing it. It's just really important that you guys remember to always vendor prefix uh, your properties that need it. So in this case the transform property does need vendor prefixes. Um, but again I have included it in the description below. So if you want to grab the code you can do that from the blog post in the description below. The other thing I want to say is if some of this was confusing for you and you want to learn uh, CSS for Squarespace, I'm working on a free four day e-course that you can sign up for on my website. That link will also be in the description below. Uh, it's completely free. I'm going to be coming out with a paid course, but I, of course, you know, I want to provide as much free value as I can to you guys. So this, this four day e-course will be completely free. And if you guys really like it and, and want to learn even more, CSS for Squarespace, then I will be, you know, leading into a paid course as well. Um, but I'll keep it pretty cheap. I'm, I'm not planning on breaking the bank or anything like that. All right, guys. So hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, please comment down below. Subscribe to my channel. Much more content coming on Squarespace customization with CSS. I will see you guys in the next one.